And I think it's interesting. We see so many young people, and I, I know there's this huge socialist wave, democratic, sorry, socialist wave in America with Bernie Sanders, and they were like, oh my gosh, all this free stuff, he is our leader. But yet, so many young people today absolutely love their iPhones. They're enthralled with social media. And so I wanted to get a couple of things that you personally enjoy that have been a product of capitalism, because I find that often in conversations, whether I'm on my local campus or somewhere else, just having a general discussion with people, I often point to my phone. This little thing right here is a media device that is brilliantly made, and somebody had to come up with this invention. So what are one or two things that you would use in a conversation, let's say, to point people towards the positive uh, production or results of capitalism that they presently use, everybody uses, uh, that socialism would not give us the freedom or choice even to utilize? Well, we're using one right now. You know, we got our phone, we're using our laptop. I've got a wonderful Chromebook right here that I'm looking right at. Um, I mean, you know, in communist nations, I mean, you can forget that. And even if you did have it, if you did have it, the government would tell you what you could watch on it, what you could read. Um, they'd take you to jail or the gulag if you were found operating outside of it. Um, so yeah, just, you know, be glad that in a country like, you know, like the United States, you can go and stand in line at Starbucks and then go sit down and get on your Chromebook or your iPhone. That's awesome. Anyone else? I think we have a lot of liberties um, and a lot of freedoms that we will see they will disappear as we move towards whatever ideology uh, we decide to move as a country. And I think that is something to really take into consideration. And the other thing that I think we need to take into consideration, and I think I'm going in a rabbit trail, however, <laughs> um, stay with me with the idea like, um, I know some people take the teachings of Jesus, some as like mandates when they are not mandates. Um, for example, this idea of like we sharing, right? Or even selling all we have um, and to share with others. That is not a mandate. Um, that comes from a uh, transform heart. And it's not like he tells you, if you want to go ahead and be in with me, then you need to go ahead and sell everything you have. I think what he's pointed at there is like, if we take our things as more important than anything else, then there's an issue of the heart. That is one thing. The other thing, if we follow whatever human is going to be in, in charge, we are all, we're humans, we're fallible. So what makes us think like the government is going to be the solution for it all? Like, I don't think it's a solution for everything because the issue of the heart remains. So. That's a great point, Monica. I love that. Yeah, we seemingly over the course of less than a century, we've turned politics and politicians into God. We look to them as our source of income and sense of security instead of the one unfailing, never-ending God who sees from the end from the beginning and knows the whole in between. And we've placed people on that, that pedestal and that level of where God should reside in our lives. I think it's, it's a very good point, and especially with Christians, uh, this new generation of Christians, and I know a few of us are in that generation even, where even over the pulpit, seemingly we're being told that Jesus was a socialist. It's the most bizarre ideology and, and has no place or roots within the gospel itself. And that, that does lead into, into a question. Should Christians be in favor? I know I gave my opinion right there. Should Christians be in favor of socialism? And where in the Bible do you, do you have you found that people, whether Christians or people in society in general, point towards a, a root, per se, of Christian socialism. 